Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Lost Ark. And in this one, I want to talk about Abyssal Dungeons. Another one of the end game activities in Lost Ark. This one is a little more challenging. This is one of the ones you will do a little bit later. Firstly, you will typically encounter Chaos Dungeons, followed by Guardian Raids. And then once you hit the appropriate item level and you've unlocked them, you can then begin doing Abyssal Dungeons. These are your more traditional dungeon setup with a couple of bosses, some loot at the end, and some of the materials you will obtain will allow you to craft some gear sets. So they are definitely worth your time. And in this video, I want to quickly go over how you unlock them, what they are, and basically cover the most important things. So if you guys do enjoy this, a like would be super appreciated. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have done any Abyssal dungeons so far how are you getting on with them what are you enjoying the most and of course don't forget to keep it locked because we've got plenty of lost art coverage coming your way so to begin with in order to unlock abyssal dungeons you will need to continue with the world story questline the blue questline basically once you get to Vern castle you go through the sort of typical flow unlock things like chaos dungeons guardian raids after that if you continue to follow the blue quests you will then go through a few more areas you will then get to the ancient elveria dungeon and following the completion of this you'll speak to an npc round out that questline and you will have abyssal dungeons unlocked from this point you can then return to this location on the map again you should be familiar with this this is where a lot of your end game activities are located and you can now go to this board interact with this to begin your abyssal dungeons so with that being said let's now go over what you need to know when you take a look at the screen this of course much like your other end game activities you would have encountered is broken down into a variety of different regions of course in order to access the later abyssal dungeons you will need to progress in the story and you will also need to meet the item level requirements so naturally if you're watching this as someone that has just hit level 50 wondering how to start your end game ancient elveria will be where you focus your attention for now but of course as you progress you can start looking at the later abyssal dungeons you can see over on the left hand side that they are broken down into different dungeons the first one is of course the first one you have access to in order to get the second one you need to have completed the first most regions have two dungeons some have more but again you can find out the details on the left now keep in mind abyssal dungeons are different to your other end game activities you would have encountered up until now i.e chaos dungeons and guardian raids in that these are a team based activity you cannot do the solo if you attempt to go in solo the game will tell you no if you want to do solo stuff turn your attention back to chaos dungeons guardian raids towers stuff like that but for these you can either match make or you can go in with a pre-made party and the reason for that is because abyssal dungeons are a much more traditional style activity you work your way through you have some trash mobs you have a couple of major bosses only the difference with these versus say dungeons you've done up until now throughout the campaign is that the campaign dungeons Generally speaking, you hit the boss until it's dead. There are, of course, a few mechanics, but you can typically just brute force your way through by just wailing on them until they're dead. Meanwhile, in Abyssal Dungeons, while yes, you do still need to hit the monster until it's dead, they do have mechanics. And some of these mechanics, if you do not take them into consideration, they can and will cause team wipes, which of course will set you back. So communication and strategy is actually incredibly important in Abyssal Dungeons. So on that note, if you guys do want us to do Abyssal Dungeon guides in the future, going over the strategies for the different bosses, let us know in the comments down below. That is definitely something we can do. But for the purposes of this video, I just want to go over the top level stuff. Again, on this menu, you can find out your recommended item level that, of course, you need to be in order to access this activity. You can see your expected rewards on the right hand side, a mixture of accessories, gold. Also, most notably, special items that you can use to craft gear sets, which I'll touch on a little bit later. But this, of course, is one of the main reasons you want to be doing this activity. It's also worth noting, much like Guardian Raids, Abyssal Dungeons also have restrictions in that you cannot use your F1 potions. You can only use the potions that go in your numerical bar. You also have limitations on the gear that you can bring with you. So once you begin, you can't be swapping out to different grenade types, different things like that when you're walking throughout the dungeon. And also your skills and your battle items are also locked. So basically, you need to make sure you prepare before you go in. It is worth noting, again, much like the Guardian Raids, they do have resupply zones. You'll find one right at the beginning of the Abyssal Dungeon, and typically there will be one located partway through as well. You can use this if you need to swap items, and you can also use this to replenish items because you also have limited potions. So if you've done Guardian Raids, you should be used to this, but do be careful when you're using your potions because, of course, if you spam them too much and you're fighting bosses and you don't have them, then things could get a little dicey. But do keep in mind, when you see these throughout the dungeon, you can use this to replenish your items, do any change you need, and then continue moving. The other thing worth noting is that Abyssal Dungeons are weekly activities as opposed to daily, like Chaos and Guardian Raids. So as you can see here, I have now completed my weekly run on the Demon Beast Canyon, but you can of course turn your attention to the next dungeon and do that. And of course, if you have the other regions unlocked, you can also do that as well. You can go back in to help other people out if you want to, but in terms of getting actual rewards from it, that is your limit. 
Now when it comes to completing the Abyssal Dungeon, of course at the end of it you will get your loot as a reward. There is an additional chest which you can open at the cost of gold if you want some additional materials. This will include a variety of different things including some of the stuff you use to hone your gear. So you can of course make this choice as you see fit. And then finally, when you've completed the Abyssal Dungeons, outside of, of course, using materials to hone your gear, the other thing you want to do is turn your attention to this location on the map. If you go over here with this sword icon, these are your gear set vendors or your gear set crafters, should I say. You can take your Abyssal Dungeon materials here and you can see that there are an array of gear sets that you can craft of increasing gear score, increasing item level. Now, I'm not going to go through the specifics in this video. Later on, if you'd like an in-depth video on the different sets, we can, of course, do that. But for the time being, just note that you have, generally speaking, like an all-rounder set, which of course is good for all characters. Then you have a much more damage-focused set or a much more support-focused set. So you will typically choose your sets based on your playstyle, based on the role that you want to fulfill. But of course, completing your Abyssal Dungeons is a means to craft these. And given that these gear sets also come with gear set bonuses, these will be things you want to pursue. But for the time being, that's pretty much it. That's a quick rundown on Abyssal Dungeons, what you need to know, how to unlock them, other things like that. Again, if you guys would like more in-depth information on, say, individual boss mechanics, definitely let us know. But in the meantime, if you guys want to find out more about how to hone your gear and boost your item level so you can be ready for Abyssal Dungeons, check out this video and be sure to keep it locked for plenty more Lost Ark.